This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. That wonderful TV year, 1981. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Way Free Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. I've collected TV Guide Fall Preview issues over the years and thought it would be fun to talk about which shows made it, which didn't, and which ones we actually watched. I do have to give credit to Ken Reed's TV Guidance Counselor podcast for this idea. Mm -hmm. Now, we're talking about 1981, which, as always, had a few hits and many failures. (laughs) I'm going to tell you right up front, I didn't watch much TV in 1981. (laughs) That fall was my first year of college, and so I was a little busy. Yep, that'll be the same for me in a couple years here. So, starting with Saturday, King's Crossing on ABC, another in a long line of nighttime soaps inspired by Dallas. The only recognizable names here are Linda Hamilton, who moved from soap to soap, that each failed, Mm -hmm. until Terminator, and Mary Fran, soon to be the wife on New Heart. Ten episodes, only seven of which actually aired. Never watched it. Walt Disney Presents on CBS. After decades on NBC, the show moved temporarily to the Tiffany Network. Disney used it to show backdoor pilots, and it ran for two years. Do you know if there were any pilots that were shown here that made it? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. The Nashville Palace on NBC. A country variety show produced by the same people as Hee Haw. Keep in mind, this was during the urban cowboy craze. Oh, okay. (laughs) And it was quickly canceled. Sunday, Code Red on ABC, Lauren Green, Bonanza, returns to TV, and you're going to hear that a lot, (laughs) returns to TV as a fire chief. Sam J. Jones, later The Highwayman, if you remember that syndicated series, also stars, this was one of those one and done, one season, and it's out. Okay. Today's FBI, ABC, Mike Connors, Mannix, returns to TV. The FBI was directly involved in producing this series the same way they were in the earlier Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. series. Okay, I was going to say, are they related? And yeah. apparently they were. And another one and done. Mm-hmm. The Powers of Matthew Starr, NBC. Alien teenage prince, Peter Barton, is sent to Earth for his own safety, but his psionic powers get in the way. I don't know if I ever watched this. But you heard about it. I think it sounds familiar. Louis Gossett Jr. played his bodyguard. The show was actually delayed one year. It was announced in 81, but delayed until 82 because there was an accident in production that burned Peter Barton badly. Ooh. And then it only ran for one season once it actually was. So, (laughs) and then Peter Barton kind of (laughs) disappeared. Well, if I'd been badly burned on the first TV show, I'd probably do. Yeah, probably. Moving to Tuesday because there were no new shows on Monday. Wow. Because I think this was between... Of course, the behemoth that is Monday Night Football. Uh-huh. And Monday was a huge night for CBS. A lot of their comedies were on. But we do start with Simon and Simon, CBS, two brothers, are PIs in this long-running series. Yes. Jameson Parker and Gerald McRaney star, guess which one had a long-running career after that? Yes. <laughs> in fact, uh, Gerald McRaney is going to be in This Is Us <laughs> yeah. that just started this season. Mm-hmm. With Tim Reed as the stereotypical black guy. It ran for eight seasons. Now, I never regularly watched it, that, but I did catch a few episodes mm-hmm. here and there. I wonder if it streams anywhere. That might be worth Oh, I bet it does. Out. I wouldn't be surprised if Hulu doesn't have it. Father Murphy on NBC. Merlin Olson, he of the pick-me-up bouquets, yeah. played a priest in the 1870s who helps orphans. Produced by Michael Landon, along with Little House on the Prairie, which Olsen had previously appeared on, but mm-hmm. not as the same character. Yes. Remembered mostly for Treakley storylines. Mm-hmm. One of NBC's rare hits at this time. It ran for two years. Ooh, two years. Yeah, that was considered a hit for NBC, yes. because this is the pre-Cosby show years, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they weren't doing well. Yeah. Brett Maverick, NBC. James Garner returns to TV. Do you sense a pattern here in the role he made famous? He settles down in an Old West town, but still gets into scrapes. One and done. This was one that I did watch, or at least tried to watch. I really wanted to like it because I love the old Maverick, Mm -hmm. and I love James Garner, but 
as I recall, I just never really got into it. And part of that might have been I couldn't really regularly watch evening TV. This was pre... DVR, pre-streaming. Pre-VCR. Pre yeah, yeah. You, you, I no, mean, you know, you were lucky if you had, had a VCR. A VCR yeah. And certainly as a college student... You didn't have a VCR. You wouldn't have a VCR. You, you didn't have a TV in your dorm room. You're, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right, moving on to Wednesday night. Mr. Merlin on CBS. San Francisco garage owner Bernard Hughes is the Merlin of myth. He's even got a sword in the stone, a crowbar in concrete, which teenager Clark Brandon pulls out. So Merlin takes him on as an apprentice to help people in need. Mm. Elaine Joyce also stars as a fellow mystic. Uh. <laughs> it's one and done. <laughs> could have been interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. I, and I think you notice here the whole returns to TV thing. I think if you were a big enough star, you got a commitment for one season. Yes. You know, uh -huh. or I, I'm not coming back unless you give me a season. Yes. So they're like, okay, there's your season. You're done. Get out. Yeah. The Fall Guy on ABC. Lee Majors, say it with me, returns, returns to, to TV, TV as a stuntman and bounty hunter. Douglas Barr, Heather Thomas, and Marky Post also star as Eye Candy. Mm -hmm. Plenty of stunt work provides the action. Yes. This ran for five seasons. Yes. This was a big hit big for hit. ABC. Mm -hmm. Love Sydney on NBC. Tony Randall returns to, you know, the drill. Mm -hmm. Based on a backdoor pilot where Tony played a gay man who invites a young actress down in her luck, Swizzy Kurtz, and her daughter to live with him. Except that the gay part never made it to series. Mm, yeah. It was very much downplayed. Maybe late in the series, it... They kind of more inferred it a little bit, but they but he's just a confirmed bachelor because America's not ready for a gay man as a main character. Yeah. It, you know, they were ready for, you know, J Jim J. Bullock as the wacky gay side character, but not as a main character. Of course, they this didn't stop the moral majority from boycotting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it did run for two seasons, though. Shannon, CBS, Kevin Dobson, Kojak moves from supporting to main character as a TV detective. This did not work out. He wasn't a big enough star, so he only got 10 episodes. Yeah. Thursday, Best of the West, ABC. The creators of Taxi created this weird parody of westerns. And I remember watching this. A decent Easterner moves west and finds out things aren't as romantic as he is expected <laughs> about the Old West. Joel Higgins from Silver Spoons, Tom Ewell from The Seven Year Itch, Carlene Watkins from Bob, Valerie Bromfield from SCTV, and Christopher Lloyd star. Despite this cast, it was a one-and-done series. Because basically, he was very naive, and everyone's like, well, we could just kill him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and there's like, what bad guys are doing stuff, and he kind of inadvertently stops them. And <sighs> Moving on to Lewis and Clark, NBC. Gabe Kaplan, welcome back, Cotter. Moves to Texas with his family to open a country music club. Urban Cowboy, remember? Oh, goodness. <laughs> this ran eight episodes and they burned off the rest in the summer. So he probably had a one year of season commitment, but they're like, this is so bad, yeah. we're not we're gonna wait till the summer to burn off these. Gimme a break, NBC. Broadway star Nell Cotter comes to TV as a feisty housekeeper to a widowed police captain, Dolph Sweet. And his kids. Mm -hmm. Sweet died during the show's run, and so Carter became a surrogate mother to them. Possibly remembered as Joey Lawrence's breakout role as the wacky teen with his catchphrase, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ran for six seasons. I, I don't think I ever watched this at all. <laughs> of course, I'm familiar with it, yeah, but yeah. it wasn't when I watched. Jessica Novak, CBS. Helen Shaver, who later became a TV director and is doing Orphan Black, Person of Interest, she's mostly a director now, plays a human interest TV reporter in this drama, only lasted seven episodes. Hmm, okay. Friday, open all night, ABC, a mostly forgotten sitcom about a convenience store. Only Jay Tarsus, who's mostly known as a producer slash writer slash director for The Bob Newhart Show and Days of Nights of Molly Dodd as the only recognizable cast member. It ran for 13 episodes. Maggie, ABC, based on and produced by Irma Bombeck. Wow. About a Dayton, Ohio housewife, Miriam Flynn, who copes with her family. 
Doris Roberts, everybody loves Raymond, also stars. Only made it to eight episodes, so hmm. apparently Irma did not get a, a one-season guarantee. McLean's Law, NBC. James Arness, Gunsmoke, returns to TV. As a retired cop who rejoins the force after his friend is murdered, he gets a young partner. There's no Miss Kitty to be found, <laughs> so it's one and done okay. for him. Strike Force, Robert Stack returns as a special police squad in color <laughs> in L.A. who solves crimes too difficult for regular cops. So it's like um, the closer before uh, the closer. <laughs> yeah, one and done. Falcon Crest, CBS, another soap based in, is actually placed in the catbird seat following Dallas. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it gets a good Yes, it did. Yeah. Jane Wyman, Lorenzo Lamas, Susan Sullivan, Rod Taylor, Ken Olin, Gregory Harrison, and half of Hollywood oh, yeah. stars. It kind of replaced oil with wine as the driving force of the show. Yeah. Ran for nine seasons. Those soap operas can do really, really good. If, if they catch on... They'll just basically run on autopilot. I mean, even now, because you look at something like Grey's Anatomy, that's a soap opera, basically. Yeah. Finally, we have The Devlin Connection on NBC. Rock Hudson returns, who's the dad, and Jack Scalia is the son. They're detectives. <laughs> <laughs> Only 13 episodes produced, so apparently Rock Hudson not big enough to get the one-year contract. Well, yeah, okay. Maybe he wanted out. That that that's good possibility. He's like, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Seeing that list of shows makes me glad that I am now in the era of peak TV. <laughs> so watch TV or check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>